Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and to this video where we are going to resurrect from the dead the original Naked palette. Remember this relic? Um, it's been so long since I even thought of this palette, um, even though it's been sitting in the background of most of my videos for a couple of years. This is one of those palettes that I owned a long time ago. Um, I depotted it, I kept a few of the shades that I thought I would use, and then I just kind of ditched the rest of it. And then a few years ago when they decided they were going to discontinue this palette, I was in a L'Oreal company store and I saw a stack of these and they were like $20 a piece and so I bought a few of them thinking that I would hold on to them a few years and then sell them on eBay later for like way more than I paid for them and then they just kind of sat around and sat around and literally collected dust and then a friend of mine was getting married a few weeks ago and so for her bridal makeup I decided you know what I'm gonna go ahead and use the naked palette on her because that's kind of the color story she wanted to use anyway so I used this palette palette on her and it worked really really well um I mean it's a few years old but the colors are still pigmented they still blend it out really well so I gifted her the palette that I used on her and I decided to crack open this palette keep this one for myself try it out again and see how I liked it but I've already got all of my complexion products on so like foundation contour um eyebrows I've already got that on um and I'll go ahead and list everything below that I've already used on my face and then I did use the shade naked from this palette to contour my nose if you guys have been here for a long time then you'll already know that I use that shade for my nose contour every time I contour my nose and then let me get some loose powder under my eyes really quick to catch some fallout and then we can get started Okay, so in my last attempt at this video, I feel like I kind of kept everything a little bit more um, like in this mid-tone range right here, um, and I didn't really go deep enough with it. I started out my transition with Naked, but I think I'm gonna go in with Buck this time, um, just because this one is a little bit deeper, and I really do want this to be a smoky eye, even though we are working out of the Naked palette. So I'm gonna start by kind of packing that into my crease and building up the shape that I want. It's crazy how something that was a staple and something that was so popular can be discontinued. Um, you guys know that most of my favorite products have been discontinued, so I'm not surprised that something like this could get the ax. Um, people were pretty upset about it when this was discontinued, um, and I just don't know if it wasn't selling that well and things that were more of like that modern renaissance or like the warm neutral trend just kind of took over and people weren't really going for a completely neutral look anymore. And I guess I wasn't interested in a completely neutral palette for a long time either. Um, I mean, again, my kind of go-to and I guess my favorite kind of eye look is a smoky eye that's a little bit almost like ugly and grungy. I definitely like, you know, olive greens. I like some plummy kind of colors. And I think probably over the past like nine months or so, when they started kind of showing what was going to be popular in the spring, and it really seemed like a lot of things were going to be pastel, I just kind of lost interest in the trendy releases. So as the new trends were kind of showing up, and I just wasn't really interested in any of that, um, I was just kind of looking for something new myself. Self. And while I don't think that I'm ever going to be a fan of like a cool tone neutral, like the new Jeffree Star palette, the cremated palette, um, I mean, for me personally, I just think that it looks like a big ashtray. And I get that that's the point. I get that it's supposed to be like 24 gray tone shades, uh, but who needs that many gray shades? Kind of like the Blue Blood palette. I've said that before. Who needs that much blue eyeshadow, you know? Because at the end of the day, most of it ends up blending out to look exactly the same anyway. And I guess that could be said about anything really. I mean, if you really kind of like look at all these colors in a row, it seems at first glance that this is just gonna be kind of like a one color story and it would all blend into the same thing. But if you really look at this palette, you've got your neutral transitions, you've got some taupe shades, um, you've got some golds and bronzes, you've got kind of like reddy taupes down here, and then you've got some cooler tone and like gunmetal colors, you know what I mean? So this really does have kind of a lot of stuff going on in one palette even though it's all very like neutral and natural and naked you know 
Now, I was never a big fan of the Naked 2 palette um, because of my coloring. That palette seemed to just really look like dirt on my face. Um, the third one is the palette that I always use the most. Um, but again, going back and looking at this one, there was something about it that was kind of calling to me. Um, I think I am just kind of ready for a basic, basic neutral palette and then something that I can use as a staple and and something that I can use as the groundwork to kind of build upon with other colors and you know you can kind of warm things up and bring other shadows in and create kind of different looks and I don't know this is just like a really good everyday works for everybody kind of palette and going back and using it again I'm like god this palette is really good and I wonder if they'll ever actually bring it back um, because they did do the reloaded palette which you know, really kind of leans really warm. And I know that's what was trendy at the time. I feel like at some point they are going to come back out with this palette. Um, I think there is going to be like a demand for it or um, it'll be like a limited run, something like that. But I think that at some point, once we really have gone through all of the trends, I mean, we've gone through the warm neutrals, we've gone through the blues, we've gone through, we've kind of gone through everything. I think at some point we're going to swing back around and this is going to be popular again. I'd give it like a year and you'll see this released again. And I think that after I get this color smoked out, I'm going to take a little air conditioning break because I really am hot. Okay, so I've cooled myself down a little bit and I'm ready to move on. Um, as far as like darker shades in this go, um, the only things that are really that deep are the shades Creep and Gunmetal. The color next to it, Hustle, I'm actually gonna go in and kind of like deepen up my crease with that shade. Even though this one is a shimmer, I just feel like I need a little bit more of a darker brown going on in there before I go in with like a black. Um, so again, I wish there was like a darker matte brown in this palette. I think it would have rounded it out a little bit better, but it is what it is, and we are going to go into that shade. And so while we're here, I just wanted to clear a little bit of something up. Those of you that follow me on Instagram probably saw a picture that I posted last week, um, which was a picture of me pouring out a bottle of Jack Daniels into the sink. Right after I posted it, I kind of was like, wait, maybe I should take that down because I know that what's going to end up happening is people are going to read that and they're going to see that picture and they are going to take that as... I have a problem, this is a cry for help, or seeking the like, oh yeah, you can do this, good job, uh, you know what I mean? Like, and I feel like there was a lot of that, and I know that it was all coming from a good place. But at the end of the day, the only real reason that I posted that was to kind of make myself accountable um, for just something that I want to put an end to, you know what I mean? So over three years ago now, actually right before I started my YouTube channel, um, I had decided that I was going to stop drinking for the year. Um, it was just one of those things where I woke up and I was like, you know, I just want to see if I can go a year without drinking. And again, I started a YouTube channel. I lost a bunch of weight um, without even trying. <laughs> and then, um, I don't know, I just overall felt so much more productive. And I'm one of those people that I get up pretty early anyway. It's rare that I'm ever asleep past like six o'clock in the morning. Um, and so, I don't know, I just felt like I was so much more productive. I put a lot of time and energy into this channel. I put a lot of time and energy into trying to like build up my Instagram and all that. And then over time, um, I would just have like a few drinks here and there. Um, and it just kind of became like, you know, it was the afternoon on my day off and it was like, yeah, I'm just kind of like hanging out, putting on some makeup. I'll go ahead and have a Jack and Coke. And that's my drink of choice is Jack and Coke. So, you know, I'd have a few drinks here or there. And I never was drinking to the point of getting drunk, really. It was like one or two drinks, you know what I mean? Like, who's drunk after two drinks? Especially when you come from my background where you completely partied your fucking ass off all through your 20s and your 30s. And I was the town drunk for several 
year. So it's like, you know, I already did that. Um, and after I had quit drinking for, you know, a full two years, um, I got to the point with alcohol where it was like, you know, when I did drink, I never really could get to the point of getting drunk, even if that was like the goal. Um, because I don't know, I just, my body wasn't into it anymore. My body wasn't feeling it anymore. And I just couldn't do it. It's like, I would get to the point of having a little bit of a buzz. And then I would just feel like, nah, I'm hungry. I'm tired. I want to eat and go to bed. And that's really where I've kept it. Now over quarantine, it just almost kind of became an every day. Um, instead of just being like, you know, once a month or once every few months, having a few drinks here and there, it was having a few drinks every day. And by that point, I had already started to get a little bit lazy. Um, I was kind of slowing down, doing anything on this channel. And I already knew that clothes weren't fitting anymore. And then again, you're just kind of at home with food for two months and you just kind of eat it all. And I'm sure a lot of you are in like a similar situation. I feel like a lot of people still aren't back to work. I'm lucky that I am, you know? But again, I was already kind of in that mindset of, eh, I'll film tomorrow. And then tomorrow would come and I'd be like, nah, I'll film tomorrow tomorrow um, and then I would film a video and then I'd be like well I'll edit that tomorrow and it would be a week before I would get around to editing a video um, and in the meantime I was just kind of like again having a drink or two a day getting really lazy getting really hungry um, I noticed that I was starting to sleep in later and for me sleeping in later was like 7 7 30 but again when you're somebody that's usually awake between like 4 30 and 5 30 um you know seven o'clock is really sleeping in you know but what I'm trying to say here is I was getting really fat and I was getting really lazy and I just think that even drinking a little bit was adding to that. When I don't drink at all, I'm just, again, so much more productive. I am so much more conscious about the food I'm eating, what I'm putting in my mouth. And not that I've ever been like fat, fat, you know what I mean? But I've always been kind of like medium fat. Um, I have the body of Bobby Hill. Um, I always have, I probably always will. Um, and when it comes to me and weight loss, I'm never gonna be the kind of person that exercises to lose weight. Like that's just not me. I fucking hate exercise. I wish I could be one of those people that gets up at the ass crack at dawn and like does a workout like those people that love to run like I don't understand you but I applaud you um, I mean that's great I wish that I could be that person but I'm just never going to be that person um, so if I can control the food that I'm putting in my mouth, then I can the, I can lose weight really easily. But it's hard to keep that motivation when you're, you know, having a few drinks in the afternoon and then just kind of being like, eh, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm just gonna kind of not care and put all the food in my mouth and then, you know, go lay down in bed and, you know, bring the jar of Nutella and a spoon to bed with me, you know what I mean? Because that was happening a lot too. Um, but again, I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea about that picture and what it meant because it really wasn't that deep it was just me making myself accountable and like just dumping it out you know what I mean but I do appreciate you and I appreciate all the kind words and all of that but again I just feel like a lot of people got the wrong impression and hustle does have such a subtle sheen to it that I think it actually does work in the crease. Um, it doesn't really read as like shimmery or shiny there. So I think it can be used for that. Um, so let's see, what do I want to put on the lid? Um, I think that I'm going to go in with sidecar um, because this one is kind of like that taupey. It almost is like a pinky taupe. And I think that'll work with everything else that's going on here. And just kind of plop that right down on the inner half of the lid there. I don't ever really do topes like this, but I'm not hating it so far. What do you guys think? I did order some eyeshadows last week. Um, I actually have been really good with my money over the past few months, and I um, tried to kind of get ahead a little bit, 
pay off some bills and that kind of stuff. And so um, now that I'm feeling a little bit comfortable with my cash flow, um, I decided that I would spend some money on myself. I have been really wanting the Gimme Glow Cosmetics grunge palette for a long time. And again, kind of like everything, I feel like with most eyeshadows, I really can dupe them with something that I already have in my collection. Um, but you know how it is, sometimes you just really like that configuration of shadows and how somebody else has put it together for you. Um, and I really love the Give Me Glow formula. Their pan sizes are kind of obnoxious actually highlighter size pans of eyeshadow. It's like, well, that's cool. I'll have this until the day I die, even if I live to be 100, you know? So now I'm gonna go in with Creep because I really do wanna get some dark ass shit going on in here. Um, I really do wanna smoke this out. Now again, I think that my normal kind of favorite would be something like Vanity by Jeffree Star or um, there's like a couple other colors like that that are like that really deep, deep, dark, Dark, um, like kind of a warm brown that maybe leans a little bit more purple, which I feel like can go with a warm look or a cool look. I just feel like that kind of tone goes with everything, um, where like a darker gray toned black doesn't go with everything, and I don't necessarily think it goes with anything else in this palette. But I'm also the guy that like, even with my favorite brands and my favorite palettes, no matter how much I love something, I always look at something and I'm like, if they would have tweaked this or if they would have done this, just this one thing, it would be so much better. And I do that with makeup, I do that with music, I do that with movies. Like I think people should send their projects to me and then I can kind of be like, no, change this, change this, this is cool. I feel like I would really be good at being that second opinion, you know what I mean? Now this palette really does have a lot of fallout, so I think that you would definitely want to either do your eyes first or put a lot of powder down like I do to catch that eyeshadow fallout. Um, and that will help you out quite a bit. But like the Anastasia eyeshadows, they have so much goddamn fallout, um, and I don't think they blend very well at all, so at least we're getting a really decent blend with these shadows. See how much I'm sweating right now? Is that showing up on camera? <laughs> I am going to blend out this shade here, and then I am going to take another air conditioning break because I need to cool down. All right, so I've got my sweat under control once again. Um, I am gonna go back into Sidecar on this little pencil brush here, and I am going to sweep that against my lower lash line, um, closer to the inner corner here. Now, this is something that I only started doing recently, um, using any kind of shimmer on the underneath side of my eyes. Like sometimes I'll throw glitter underneath there, but it's really rare that I'll ever put a shimmer on the lower lash line. Um, now, if any of you guys watch Beauty News, so you've got Kat and Haley, and they each have their own separate YouTube channels. Well, a lot of times when Kat is doing her makeup, she will take a shimmery shade and she will sweep it across that lower lash line and it always looks really cool. So I definitely have taken some inspiration and some tips from her lately. Um, and I've really been liking the way that a shimmer looks on that lower lash line. Now, my skin is definitely a little bit crepey and a little bit wrinkly on that lash line down there. Um, so something like this is gonna emphasize that texture and again, that crepiness, but if you care about it, don't do it. And if you don't care about that, then go ahead and try something different, you know? I've really been liking the way that it turns out.
All right, and then to brighten up that inner corner a little bit, this isn't gonna be too, too bright, um, but I am gonna go in with the shade Sin right here. I wiped off that pencil brush and I'm taking this on the same brush and it's really subtle, so it's not gonna be like a really bright, blinding inner corner highlight, um, which again, that's fine, I'm a fan of. I wanna try doing something a little bit different than I usually do. Um, in fact, for me, I would normally go in and throw like a glitter on that inner corner. Um, and don't worry, you haven't lost that. <laughs> I will be jumping back into that pretty soon. I've got a lot of new glitters I need to use on my channel too. So there are some really cool new glitters coming this summer from Lit Cosmetics. So I definitely want to use some of those and show you guys those glitters. So. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and sweep away all this fallout, get some mascara on, figure out something to do with this hair, and I'll be right back with the final look. So that is the final look using the original Urban Decay Naked Palette. Sound off down below. What do you guys think of this palette? Do you still love it? Do you still use it? Um, do you think it should make a return? I feel like it's going to. I think it's gonna come back once all of these trends die down and everybody wants to return to something super basic and super wearable and usable. Something that works across the board for all skin tones. I think it's a really good staple palette and I can't believe I've had this sitting in my collection for a couple of years now and just never really went back to it. Um, I love it. I really would like to see Jeffree Star's take on something like this. I know that he just did the cremated palette, so I can't imagine he would come out with another neutral palette in the near future hopefully someday. Um, but again, for now, I'm really gonna enjoy this palette. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you guys on the next one.